Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. Before I get into our Noah's Window edition today, I need to let you know Mary Allison and I are taping this on Thursday afternoon outside and sometimes the birds can get kind of loud in our tree line, but we love taping outside. But uh, the birds do sing here. We enjoy that. We, we really love to hear them sing. It's just a reminder of God's creation. And also, I like to work out here a lot in the evenings and oftentimes I'm calling new springers, you know, to check on some who or ill or having a challenge or just sharing something. And uh, oftentimes when I'm talking to a new springer, they'll say, well, I know who you are <laughs> because they can hear the birds singing. Well, Mary Allison, I've talked about this a little bit today. I just got back from Mexico. I've been there for six days and uh, wound up speaking seven times in six days. And Mary Allison, I thought that perhaps I might just share with you a little bit of, about my trip and uh, what God did while I was there. And then there's something very special that I want to do at the end that really does uh, involve many of you. But I had the opportunity to do really three kinds of speaking when I was in Mexico. Uh, I began with the men's conference, then I spoke for a church, and then Monday through Wednesday I did a pastor's conference. Uh, the church that I spoke for is Horizonte Church in Queretaro, uh, Mexico, which is, Queretaro is a very interesting city. Uh, it's kind of, I would kind of call it the Wichita of Mexico because there's so much manufacturing uh, that's done in that city. In fact, just as I was being dropped off at the airport, there's a very large uh, aircraft manufacturing uh, plant. Uh, they also have a Toyota plant in the city. So basically the people who are there in the city are there to work. But in the midst of the city is Horizonte Church. You know, I, I travel and I'm around a lot of great churches, but interestingly, Horizonte Church is more like New Spring than any church I've ever encountered in the world. It's pastored and led by a great leader, uh, Kike Torres and his wife, Pau, who are dear friends of Mary Alice and me. Uh, Kike is almost 40 years old, uh, but at his age, he's already an extraordinary leader. Uh, when I spoke at the service on Sunday, there were 1,800 adults there, and there were 400 kids and there were guest services all around, so already you can imagine it sounding a whole lot like New Spring. But I actually began on Friday and Saturday with a men's conference, and men came from all over that part of Mexico. Some of the men drove as far as five hours, one way to be in the conference. So I flew there Friday morning and then wound up speaking Friday evening uh, to those 900 men, and I brought a message that God had really put on my heart, a message I'd only pre preached twice. I think I preached it uh, at New Spring, on my 30th anniversary, the staff had challenged me to preach my five favorite sermons. I actually wrote the message. The only other time I preached it was when I was barely 30. A message called Snakes and Fences. And God just really came. When I gave the invitation, something happened that I've never seen before. There were 20 plus, 20 plus trained altar workers ready to receive the men as they came forward. And it, it was as if all the men coming forward overwhelmed the altar workers. Every altar worker was dealing with someone and the men were lined up in the aisles waiting for an available altar worker. God just came and really visited. And really the same thing happened on Sunday uh, when I gave the invitation for the service. Then Monday through Wednesday I had the opportunity to speak to over a hundred pastors and their wives who had come from all over that part of Mexico and I could just keep this Noah's window going for a long time sharing just the extraordinary things. Uh, the last day right before I left, uh, the, the day that I did leave, God had given me a message I'd never preached before. He gave it to me back in April, and uh, I brought that, and it was just a tremendous time of revival and recommitment for those pastors. So I've said all that to say this. I mean, first I wanted to let you know uh, where I've been these last few days and uh, what God has done through that ministry. But the main thing I want to share with you is before I left, I had asked many people at New Spring to pray, and I know that many of you have been praying for that. I just have to let you know that we really do feel those prayers, and I'm not just speaking for myself, but Mary Alice as well. You know, oftentimes our, our life and our job is way bigger than we are, and we do feel the exhaustion, and, and we definitely feel the bigness of the task that God has called us to. You know, there's a, a, a scripture in the book of 2 Corinthians that really does express how we feel. Paul is talking about the challenges of the ministry, and then he asks an almost rhetorical question. He said, who is sufficient for these things? You know, a few verses later, he answers, our sufficiency is of Christ. But we, we really do feel that inadequacy. And But I want you to know what we also feel. We feel your prayers. And I have to tell you that Friday night I was exhausted. I'd flown all day to get there. 
and I knew it was going to be a challenge because I didn't speak the language. I was going to have an interpreter. But when I stood before those men to bring the Word of God, I could feel the power that came from prayers. And that happened all week long in all seven messages. So I just want to say to all of you who pray, not just like from my trip to Mexico and preaching, but for Mary Alice as well, as we try to follow the Lord and do the ministry that He's called us to. If, if I have a verse for you today, it would be from the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. The Bible says, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. That's what we want. We're praying that God will give us an open door. And your prayers hold us up, sustain us. And when God answers your prayers, we always know that we didn't minister in our own strength. We ministered in the power that the Holy Spirit brought to us. So for all of you at Noah's window who pray for us uh, and ask God to help us and strengthen us, it means so much. And we pray for you that God will work in your lives, that he will help you and answer your prayers. And I know that many of you are, you're, are facing questions that you don't have an answer for and you're waiting on God. We're praying that God will answer your prayer. In fact, I think that's a great thing for me to do right now. Uh, let's just pray together. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for helping me and uh, Mary Alice this week and the challenges we have. Thank you for helping all of our Noah's Window family. And we do pray, especially for those who are dealing with illness or those who are dealing with a family problem or those who have a, a question, they're seeking your will. And they want to know which direction to take that pleases you. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will come into our situation with great power. We know he's already there, but come in with great power so that we can give glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you for the open doors that you give us to minister in these last days before Jesus comes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me today on Noah's Window. Mary Alice and I'll be back shortly. Uh, don't forget, if you're a new springer, we have a very important 4th of July uh, service, a weekend plan, a lot of cool stuff. You will not want to miss this service. Saturday at 4 o'clock, Sunday morning, 9.15 and 11.15. So until then, may God bless you. We'll see you soon.